Daniel Larson, a homeless man who roams the streets of Denver, Colorado. He believes that he is destined to marry America's Got Talent winner Grace Vanderwall. He believes he is a famous singer. In reality, it is all a lie. Cleverly set up by trolls, Daniel lives each day believing that he is famous and inches away from meeting Grace. Welcome to Daniel's Denial, a documentary series covering the life and times of Daniel Larson. Daniel Robert Larson was born November 15, 1998 to his parents Elizabeth Scheimer and James Larson in Lancaster, California. Daniel has a half-sister named Aurora and two younger twin sisters that didn't make it. Daniel would be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder in his childhood. He was sent to live with his grandmother, Nancy Scheimer, at age 11. When he moved to Colorado from Lancaster, he was enrolled in the Tennyson Center for Children as an effort to help him overcome his trauma and disabilities. Daniel was featured in a KWGN news report when he was 14. The video begins with young Daniel swinging on a swing set. The camera then pans to Daniel hugging his grandmother. The shot then changes to Daniel in a library, talking about how he felt when he first came to Tennyson. The camera then switches to Daniel and his grandma sitting at a picnic table. The narrator explains that Daniel came from an extremely neglectful home. She then tells us that Daniel lived at the center for a year and a half, that his grandma moved from California to Denver to be his guardian and to prevent Daniel from ending up in foster care. The rest of the video explains that Daniel has seen much improvement from his angry self since joining Tennyson. The video concludes with Daniel thanking Tennyson for helping him improve. This video is the biggest insight into Daniel's troubled childhood. There are some other videos, but they really don't reveal much. One such video, uploaded by Larson Leak, shows Daniel auditioning for a musical theater production in 2014. Daniel is quite behind the others in the video. He is seen jumping out of time with the cast and at one point even jumps randomly while the rest of the cast is squatting. The other two videos uploaded by Larson Leak just show pictures from his childhood and show one of Daniel's classmates performing a rap song for his graduation. These pictures show how abnormal Daniel looks in comparison to his peers, notably his relatively small head. According to many sources, Daniel has fetal alcohol syndrome, which may have contributed to his distinct appearance. Daniel's obsession with singer-songwriter Grace Vanderwall began in his childhood. Daniel and his grandmother would watch America's Got Talent together after school. In season 11 of the show, a singer named Grace Vanderwall would rise to prominence and eventually win. As Grace continued to advance further in the competition, Daniel only became more fixated on her. Daniel's grandmother would only add fuel to the fire with an innocent remark about how maybe Daniel could be with Grace in his future. Little did she know that these words would fuel delusions that Daniel would base his entire existence over. Daniel would meet an acquaintance named Bob Proctor while in a reading program. The Bob Proctor named in this story is not associated with the Bob Proctor who wrote You Were Born Rich. According to Daniel, he and Bob really hit it off and they became close. Nancy also became close with Bob. After Nancy passed on in 2019, Bob would pay for Daniel's many expenses which included his first song titled Roaring Thunder. Here is a snippet from the song. A reminder of what used to be Bob will become very important later on in the story, as he would financially enable Daniel's delusions and also turn a blind eye to them. While the Tennyson Center video may have shown a young Daniel full of hope and optimism for the future, things went downhill as soon as he started using social media. Daniel's first TikTok account uploaded its first video on September 19th of 2019 and was called Daniel Lars 20. This account featured three videos, one of Daniel sliding down a yellow slide, the next one showing some fireworks, and the final one showing him filming down from on top of a mountain. Daniel's first known YouTube account was created on June 7th of 2019. Daniel would upload his first video titled Fireworks on September 24th of 2019. The video showcases a fireworks show that Daniel was watching. The 
other videos on the channel include a few poorly filmed concert videos and a video titled My Normal Life, in which Daniel interacts with a man wearing a cowboy hat and smoking a pipe. Daniel created another account on TikTok in March 2020 that started gaining traction. Daniel gained attention to his strange ways and his appearance. Daniel's first notable video was called Good Night Everyone. In this video, Daniel thanks his audience for watching his live and wishes his audience a good night. I will play it here. Good night, everyone. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for everyone who was in the live video today. Thank you for everyone's support. See you on the flip side. Daniel would continue posting videos and gain more popularity. Of course, with any kind of fame and popularity comes trolls, people who make it their life's goal to harass or manipulate someone on the internet. Daniel's trolls became prominent around the 2020 George Floyd riots, which Daniel thought his fans were causing because of him. Trolls would then find out that Daniel was extremely gullible and would believe just about any lie they crafted up. The trolls would invite Daniel to video calls and pretend to be important people in the music industry. They made Daniel do horrible things to prove that he was ready for showbiz, such as exposing himself and saying threats. Around this time, Daniel's first manager, known online as Flexburger, came into contact with him. Flexburger would gain Daniel's trust by making him believe that he was a music executive that promised Daniel a career in music. Around this time, Daniel would post a video claiming that he was running for president, which earned him the title Mr. President, a nickname that sticks even to this very day. During Daniel's campaign, we learn he wanted to lower the age of consent. This brings us to one of the more twisted parts of Daniel's story. Companies, I follow family, my family follows me. At this point, most believe Daniel to be an innocent man who is being taken advantage of by trolls. This innocence wouldn't last long though because on November 20th, 2020, Daniel's Pinterest account would be leaked by Flexburger, revealing that Daniel was a pedophile. The account is incredibly disturbing, with many photos of young girls saved to the boards, notably pictures of Grace Vanderwall, who was underage at the time. The names of the boards were just as vile, with names such as masturbation and age and sexual activity. There was also a map of the age of consent in the United States saved to the account. Upon being confronted about it, Daniel admitted to pleasuring himself to these boards, quote unquote, a long time ago. Daniel would delete his account later that day. There are some theories that Flexburger created the account himself to mess with Daniel, but Daniel has admitted to these wrongdoings on his own accord multiple times, which discredits these theories. Daniel was later seen on a video call in which he made an admission of guilt by ignoring questions and changing the story multiple times. On November 22nd, Daniel would delete many videos from his TikTok and shut down his comments section. Most of the deleted videos were related to Grace Vanderwall. Daniel's account would be taken down for unknown reasons only two days later, likely as a result of everything that's been happening. The account was shortly reinstated. On December 11th, 2020, Daniel posted a duet video featuring a young girl, which would only serve to dig Daniel deeper into this hole. The next day, Daniel would claim that one of his record labels, Roach Records, was responsible for creating the Pinterest account to frame Daniel. He would also claim to be suing the Diligent Broadcast for damages caused by the Pinterest. Daniel would later sympathize with EDP 445. He would post a video expressing his sorrow for said YouTuber. It also appears that Daniel is reading something, noted by the way that he looks to the side, pauses, and also by the way he sounds out the phrase EDP 445. Either way, this was not a good look for Daniel, especially after everything else that happened. Hello, this is Daniel Larson. I just wanted to shout out the YouTuber EDP445. I am sorry for the allegations against you. I am sorry. We are in this together. I have been there too. I hope we could possibly collaborate in the future. Please stay tuned for my upcoming events. If you need anything, feel free to message.
I hope everything gets better. Thank you. Behind the scenes, Daniel would be coaxed into committing the act that would come to be known as the May 6th incident, which got the Daniel Larson fans account banned. Shortly before the incident, Daniel would declare war on Flexburger and then go on lockdown. Hello, this video is for Flexburger. You fucking suck. Your, your, your YouTube video, your social media, everything is gonna go down in fucking flames. Your fucking career is over. Thanks for exposing me. I really fucking appreciate it, fucking bitch. Because of what Flexburger posted, we are going on lockdown. Everybody, we are going on lockdown. Stay tuned for what happens next. And Flexburger on YouTube and TikTok, you are a fucking bitch for exposing me. We are calling the Denver Police Department and reporting you. The FBI will be coming to your house. On May 6th, Daniel would go on TikTok Live and host a concert with this live stream cut short because Daniel believed to have been hacked. Later, Daniel would announce that he would be auditioning for an adult film via TikTok Live. Daniel then started the live and would flash his genitals to his audience of 500 people. The account would almost immediately be banned. The May 6th incident would also be the first of a long list of incidents involving Daniel. In an effort to get a rise out of delusional and gullible Daniel, trolls would tell him false stories about Grace being in harm's way. Many a time, trolls have told Daniel that Grace was in the hospital about to die. Daniel's delusions being fed by trolls would cause an incident known as the Likey Meltdown. On June 15th, 2021, he would be placed under the delusion that Grace and her family had been in some sort of life-threatening accident and were in critical condition. Daniel would beg the Vanderwall team to tell him what happened and to let him know if they were okay. He posted a series of short videos of his pleas and cries to Likey, a short form video platform similar to TikTok. The reason for this is because he broke his phone and was on his laptop claiming that he was throwing it around and it fell, breaking it and rendering it useless, and therefore he was unable to access his TikTok account. Daniel kicks off the meltdown by telling his audience about the situation and for people to contact him via Likey. He then asks the viewers to pray for the Vanderwalls. He mentions that he isn't able to message people in any way and for everyone to stay tuned. Daniel declares that it is an emergency and for the Vanderwalls to post a video on their social media asking for people to pray for them. He also asks for pictures of the family in their critical state. He would also ask for updates on what he could do to help with the crisis at hand. Apparently, he is unable to use Google or YouTube at this time, therefore using Likey as an alternative. Daniel continues by asking his audience to check out his YouTube and having people comment and update him on the situation. He, he then says he will self-delete if people don't do as he says in an attempt to manipulate them into commenting. Daniel using self-harm or self-deletion in an effort to manipulate others is going to be a common theme in this story. Daniel will hit himself, threaten to end himself, or straight up beat himself down until he could barely move to get others to feel sympathy for him. In the next clip, it appears he was crying in between videos. He claims that someone known as JP threatened to kill him. Daniel would end this clip by threatening to end himself again. He is beat red in the next clip, saying that he can't take this three times before cutting the camera. The clip after this shows him begging for the Vanderwall team to get his message, once again threatening to end himself if they didn't let him back on the team. Daniel begs the Vanderwalls to message him while becoming increasingly hysterical in the next clip. He then says he will start taking the videos he posted down when he got word about what was happening from the Vanderwalls. He appears more aggressive now, with a scowl on his face and asking his audience to update him now. He says that he's starting to get fucking angry. Daniel then claims that JP is in trouble for the death threats. He then says that if he's led on the Vanderwall team, he will fight to spread the message about the emergency. The rest of the meltdown consists of Daniel switching between various states of emotion, hitting himself a few times, and constantly begging to be on the Vanderwall team. He iterates that it is an emergency and asks his viewers to contact him now. I will now play the entirety of the meltdown. Here it is. 
Hello, this is Daniel Larson. My phone ended up breaking last night when everything was going on. I was tossing the phone in the air and it ended up, um, the screen ended up going blank and it showed static. So please, if you get this message, know that I'm currently trying. You can contact me through here. Fortunately, I will have to give video updates. This message goes out to the Vanderwall family. Please, please pray for the Vanderwall family. They're currently in critical condition. This message goes out to the Vanderwall team. I am currently trying everything I could possibly try. Even though my phone broke, I have still gotten out the message. I will give more updates as I go. But unfortunately, I'm without a phone right now. And so I'm currently doing everything by laptop. Unfortunately, it will not let me message as of right now. So I can only do videos. But please stay tuned. I will try to give updates and I'll try to get everything situated. Hello, this is Daniel Larson. This is a state of emergency order to the Vanderwall team. Please make another video and post it on all social, all social media platforms and say, please pray for the Vanderwall family. Please pray, pray for the Vanderwall family. They're in critical condition. And leave it there. I want pictures of the entire family. Please post now. Hello, this is Daniel Larson. Please let me know if there's anything I could do to help. Please ask the Vanderwall team what I need to do to help and also to rank up in the company. Hello, the Daniel Larson team and my record label. There's currently a situation. Google and YouTube are not letting me use them. I don't know what's going on. I thought we had an agreement, but unfortunately I lost all access to making new Google accounts. I currently am stuck. I have no way of contacting you. Likey is not letting me post. Hey, Josh and Jay, please contact JP now. We have an emergency. Please message me, Josh. Please send Jay and Bob the contract for Party House. They need to see it. They need proof for the investigation. The police are about to be called into the situation. We still are getting zero responses. Guys, check out my YouTube now and please comment. Check out my YouTube now and please comment. If I get the response, I will take it all down. This is my only source right now. Do it now or I commit suicide. This is Daniel Larson. JP threatened to kill me to do all this. Please let me back on the team now or I commit suicide. I can't take this. I can't take this. I can't take this. Josh, Jane, Vanderwall family, please, I hope you're seeing this right now, please. I can't take this much longer. I'm about to, I'm about to commit suicide. Emergency, emergency. Josh, Jay. Vanderwall family, please look at my latest YouTube. Please look at my latest YouTube. I am fighting, but this is my only source of contact. And to know that right now that you actually get it. Please message me. Please message me now. If you guys start messaging me on YouTube so I know what the fuck is going on and I know I'm being hurt. Then I will start taking the videos down. But until then, I want to make sure that they get heard by you guys. Guys, message me now on YouTube. Now. Now.
I'm starting to get fucking angry. My JP is currently in big trouble because he forced me to do this. He's, he threatened to fucking murder me. If you guys let me join the team now, I will sit here and I will fight. I will make videos on Likey for the rest of the night to spread the message. But you have to, you have to bear with me. You guys are going to have to fight. I'm fighting right now. Now, guys, it's an emergency. Now, guys. I will not take the videos down until I get on the team fully. I will not back down. This is my only source of contact right now. And by you guys commenting on my YouTube videos, that's the only way right, right now I know that you guys are hearing me. Josh, I will call you in a bit. I am trying everything I can. Please message me on YouTube. I need to, I need to know what's going on. It's my only source of communication. I'm trying to get the message across that it was all an accident. JP forced me. He threatened to kill me. I had to, otherwise he would have killed me. I don't know what else to say, guys. I'm telling the fucking truth. And you guys are not doing anything I ask. I don't know what to fucking believe anymore. I'm done. I'm gonna be homeless before we flippin' know it. I'm gonna be fucking homeless. And it's all thanks to fucking JP. The faster you guys respond, the faster we could take the videos down. <sighs> I demand being on the Vanderbilt team. I demand. I demand. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. Look at my last YouTube video, guys. Now. It's getting worse. And I'm about to have a panic attack. Guys, I don't know what's going on. No one is messaging me. I don't know what's being said. Can I at least get some flippin' updates so I could start taking some videos down? What happened to my support? What happened to my team? What happened to everybody? Everyone on the entire team and everyone who is seeing this. Message. Josh, now. The only reason why I'm posting this is because I'm trying to get this heard. I want on the team now. Do not block me on all social medias or I will fucking die. <laughs> I'm currently under attack. Please, please, please. I'm currently under attack. You need to let me on the team now. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Please let me on the team. I can't do anything. I want out. I want out. I will take down two videos on YouTube to show that I care. I will take down two. I, it's not letting me into my email. It's not letting me into my email because I don't have my phone number. And it's not sending a verification to my phone. This is my only source of communication right now. For email, it wants my phone number for verification. Please, all I need is an answer. Yes, you're on the team, and then everything will get taken down. I'm trying to call Josh, but it won't be till later because I have to go all the way to the store just to do it. If you don't let me on the team now... <laughs> I'm going to have to die. I'm going to have to stop. I don't know. I'm trying everything. I will take down all videos but one. I'm going to take down all videos but one on YouTube. But please, please fucking believe me. Please comment on the YouTube so I fucking know you guys are listening. It's a fucking fact that I'm trying. All I want to be is help, and all I want to be is on the team.
so I could so I could get a life. I have started deleting videos on YouTube, but please trust me, I need a comment now. I want to be with the team. <sighs> Jay, I mean, JP is currently in big trouble with the police for what he did. This meltdown would be the first of many and would show how truly delusional Daniel actually was and how easy it was to mess with his head. This also showed how he would use self-harm as a means to manipulate others into giving him what he wanted. Trolls would take this into account and many similar incidents would follow. Daniel's terrifying story only continues. It is a constantly evolving situation and my documentary series may never truly be up to date with all that happens. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. Uh, I really appreciate you and uh, just know that you're amazing, you matter, you are a great person, and I really, really appreciate your view, your like, and your subscription, and your comment. Um, if I made any mistakes, please put them down below in a comment and uh, let me know what I did, and I'll do my best to remediate that mistake. Until next time, guys, um, this has been Jitter Plain TV, and uh, I really hope you all have a great rest of your day or night. And the next part to this series will be posted quite soon. Stay tuned.